extend a very warm and cordial welcome, my dear brother and sister, my friend in Christ, to Hope for the Time of the End. Yours truly, Harold Zapata, with Advent on Ministries in cooperation with Loma Linda Broadcasting Network and their beautiful studios here in Loma Linda, California. And we are continuing in our series, this Hope for the Time of the End. And our subject today is the continuation of the, of the last time we were together. A sure God in uncertain times, part two. So in the first part, what we did is we, we were able to look and go over through the Library of Congress and we read the words of Alfred Lord Tennyson when he stated, one God, one law, one element, one far off, but we found that is not that far off, divine event to which the whole creation is moving. We talked about how it is that every single situation right now on planet Earth, wars in, in, in Ukraine and Russia, possible uh, war, uh, war drums in, out there in uh, Taiwan and uh, China, and how we are all involved in this. All the different uh, meetings of heads of state to try to stem back what could become a third world war. We talked about what we see almost on a nightly news every day, shooting and pestilences, inflation, and people being more and more um, perplexed uncertain and that's what we're talking about a certain God in uncertain times now it is that people are beginning to open up the word and they're beginning to read and the promise that is given to you when you do that Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 we saw last time we were together where it states blessed is he that readeth and he that he hears the words of this prophecy and those that keep the things written therein for the time is at hand and we looked at this time that was at hand the time that it is referring to is referring to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and we talked about Matthew 24 how Jesus talked about a time of deception a time of disasters a time of distresses and how he promised that he would be with his people he would be with us through it all we looked at the different signs and we looked at Jesus says these signs are like the beginning of birth pains. And they're going to in, increase like starting with Braxton Hicks and then moving into the early labor of 20 minutes, uh, these contractions apart. And then active labor, five minute contractions apart. The transitionary period now two minutes apart. And then one minute and then 30 seconds and then every 10 seconds. And again, they become stronger and closer, stronger and closer, stronger and closer until the baby comes. And so Christ said, so are the signs to be seen. It's going to get rougher. They're going to get stronger. And we looked at the times of deception. He says, be careful. A lot of false Christs and prophets, don't go after them. We talked about disasters and we looked at uh, earthquakes and pestilences and famines in diverse places. We looked at twisters and, and hurricanes and tsunamis. And we looked at the hearts of men failing for them for the great time tidal waves that shall be coming and then we talked about signs coming from heaven in the sun in the moon in the stars these are the days in which we're living now we'll talk about some of the distresses before the coming of Christ Revelation chapter 13 verse 13 the Bible states and Antichrist doeth great wonders and Antichrist deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which God had given him power to do in the sight of the beast and cause that as many around the world that would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Persecution. And he, Antichrist, causeth all around the world to receive a mark, whether you like it or not, and that no man might be able to buy or sell. There's going to be a monopol monopolization of the, of the whole market, of the whole uh, worldwide society. And no one can do that save that person that had the mark of the beast or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So, so Jesus is telling us that in the last days, in the midst of wars and and, and rumors of wars, in the midst of famines and pestilences, in the midst of great signs taking place in the heaven, on earth, 
there's going to be Antichrist. And Antichrist is going to do everything that it possibly can to deceive the world by means of miracles. You see, you can't just believe everything you see. And even if it comes to pass, if it's not according to what they speak, according to God's word, know that God has sent them to deceive the world for the Lord himself shall, shall send strong delusion that the whole world might believe a lie, the Bible says in Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we are living in very peculiar, peculiar times. These signs of the times are being fulfilled in our very presence. This is the generation that will be seeing the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You, your children, your grandchildren, we together are seeing these signs coming stronger and closer, stronger and closer, and they will usher in an entity that is going to try to bring a one world order, a new world order, and is going to force people against their conscience or trying to convince them to accept something universal, something that distinguishes a power called a beast in the Bible. It's not derogatory. A beast basically represents an empire. There's a, a last day empire that may start off as a little lamb with two horns, but it speaks like a dragon. It talks about an entity that is going to form an image to the beast and whoever does not bow to that, like those three young Hebrew worthies, they did not bow, bend, or budge when that big statue came before them and everyone else did, but they didn't. So it shall be in the last days. Christ is telling us that beside the deceptions and beside the disasters, beside the distresses, he that is faithful to the end shall be saved. You can't love your life that much if we're going to go through these last days. We need a special power that lives and resides in the inside of us. And there is a blessing for those who are studying these words today. Jesus said it in Matthew 24, we saw this last time we were together. If you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, whosoever readeth, let him also understand. We are studying these prophecies so that we may know the days in which we're living in. And there's a reason why. Your Bible says in the book of Matthew 24, verse 38 and 39, For as it was in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving themselves in marriage. Everything seemed hunky-dory until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And they knew it not until the flood came and it was too late and took them all away. So, just like that, people will be living a regular life in the midst of all these topsy-turvy moments, but they did not know because they did not study. And so shall it be also in the days of the, of the coming of the Son of Man. And this is why we're having these meetings. We're having them so that we understand as it was in the days of Noah, we, we don't have to be, be enamored with the world. We don't have to live after every new fashion, after every new song, after every new trend. What gets your attention gets you. I'm hoping, trusting, and praying that these messages, the Word of God, gets your attention. There is no car, there is no house, there is no promotion, there is no six-pack that is worth losing your life after such a great message Jesus has left for us to study. He wants us to turn away from the things of this world and begin to study the Bible. Begin to congregate in churches and small groups and homes and that we could understand the days in which we're living. Because Noah's days, everyone was living their life like nothing and they were not studying 
and they knew it not until it was too late. And you don't want to be in that group. You want to know to prepare. You want to know to ask the Lord to help you. He's promised, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. The Bible says in the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Now, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord and by our gathering together to Him, let no man deceive you. The Bible tells us that this last day, the coming of Christ and us being gathered together to Him, the rapture, is the self-same event. This end of the world when Christ returns and us being gathered up to Him, the rapture, is not divided in one part here and then seven years later the other, but it's the self-same event. And 2 Thessalonians is very clear about that. The rapture and the second coming of Jesus are the same. Matthew 13 also stated, that he answered and said again, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man, the field is the world, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, the tares are the children of the wicked one, the enemy is the devil, the harvest is the end. There is, after the rapture, no other seven years for people to, to shape up or ship out. The harvest, the rapture, the second coming, there's a same, self same event, is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels. Furthermore, look at 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you need not that we write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren... You're not in darkness that that they should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all of the children of light. You're the children of the day. We are not of the night. We're not of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ said very clearly, my coming is going to surprise people that were not studying that were living their life, they were living also in darkness, they were living in drunkenness, in stupor, just from one party to the other, from one dance hall to the other, from one stadium to the other. It doesn't have to be like that. If the coming of Christ is as as a thief for you, you're lost. The Bible says He's not coming as a thief for His people. We're going to be saying, behold, this is our God. We've waited for him and he's come to save us. Behold, this is our Lord. We shall be glad and rejoice in his salvation. We've been waiting for him. We're preparing for him. He will have a bride ready for his coming. This is very, very important that we understand how the Lord Jesus Christ is coming. But also, what is the greatest sign that has to do with his coming? More than deceptions, more than disasters, more than distresses. The great question mark that I'd like to put right now on the screen is, what is the greatest sign of His coming? And Jesus said it, Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. How is it that we preach it through a witness? Acts 1, verse 8. You'll become a witness when you receive the power of the Holy Ghost when He's come upon you. And then you shall be my witnesses to take this gospel into all the world for a witness and then the end shall come. So we receive a special dispensation of Holy Ghost power that the Bible calls in Daniel chapter 12 verse 6. Read this here closely with me. One man said to the other, uh, which was upon the waters of the river, How long shall it be to the end? When is the end of all these things? And I heard the man clothed in linen, when he uh, shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, then all these things shall be finished. That word scatter in Hebrew, when he have accomplished to nafatz, in Hebrew, nafatz, is very similar to nefetz. Nefetz is rain, storm. Nefetz is is the latter rain. 
when God is finished sending forth his spirit in last day Pentecostal power upon this world, then the preaching of the gospel empowered by that spirit is going to make sure almost like a rain. And we had a lot of rains here in Southern California not too long ago. And I can tell you my backyard has a lot of weeds. They'll grow up really quick. And that rain that comes down is going to help the harvest to ripen. So the wheat will ripen, the tares will ripen, and now comes the final harvest, the end of the world. When is the end of all these things? When the gospel of the kingdom is preached by a witness. When do we become witnesses? When we receive the Holy Spirit. How does this happen? When God scatters that power by rain upon the holy people, then the end shall come. Then shall be the end of all these things. Acts chapter 3 tells us the following, verse 19 and 20. Repent therefore and turn back that your sins may be blotted out, that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, that he may send the Christ appointed to you. Let's look at this verse here just for a second. The Bible says that there are times of refreshing that are coming to us. Refreshing. God is going to come close to his people and his presence is going to refresh them. Have you had enough mud to drink? Have you seen enough bad news that now we can really appreciate the good news? The good news is this. You are not alone. Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. And how he's going to be with us is in a very particular sense. Him sending the Holy Spirit through special outpouring called the times of refreshing. And the Bible said there in verse 20, if we put that back on verse 20, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And then after he visits us in a special way with his presence by his Holy Spirit to empower his people to finish everything, then he will send the Christ appointed for you. Again, Jesus says, it behooves you that I go back to heaven because if I don't go back, I can't send the Holy Spirit. And although the, although the Spirit has been with us in a special way, we're waiting for a special outpouring of the Holy Ghost in the last days by the latter rain. And then once that latter rain falls and the Spirit stays with God's people, those that receive the message, the last day message that we'll be studying in these meetings together for the next 28 lectures, this special message, as people receive it, they receive that additional oil of the Holy Ghost and they stay and keep it and that's enough to weather the storm to the very end. But those that give their back to the truth, those that rather love unrighteousness and stifle the truth with tradition or the truth with just a heaping to themselves masters after their own lusts and their itching concupiscences and lusts and diverse manifold um, lasciviousness, they are already condemned for the light came and the unpardonable sin will be committed by most of the people in the world and the latter rain will accomplish to help grow the wheat and help grow the tear. You don't want to be a tear. You want to be a wheat. You don't want to be a child of the devil. You want to be a child of God. And the only way this happens is as the Holy Spirit rebirths you, you must be born. I must be born. We must be born again. Not by your own will. You can't birth yourself. It has to be by the will of God the Father. For it is not of him that wills or seeks or tries, but of God that himself will have mercy upon him whom or she that he will have mercy. The book of Hosea chapter 6 repeats this in the Old Testament fashion. God, he, shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the early rain. And so what we're called to ask for today in Zechariah 10.1, therefore, after learning these things, ask of the Lord rain, pray on your knees, give me the Holy Ghost, send forth your word, let there be power, give, give your Holy Spirit to the church, to the remnant, to the elect in the last days, that we would swell up the three angels' messages that prepares the coming of Christ for the last and final harvest. And it shall come to pass in Joel 2, 28, 
Then I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. So what is the message? What is the message that this last day people that have received the Holy Spirit must go out and proclaim to all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people? I'm glad you asked. Revelation chapter 14. We have it on the screen. Verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having, there it goes, the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Do you want to know what the everlasting gospel is? Here we go. Part one, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory for the hour of his judgment is come and worship him, not the beast. Worship him, not the image of the beast. Worship him, not your church or pastor. Worship him who's the creator who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of waters. Part two, there followed a second angel saying with a loud voice, Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Part three, and then followed the third angel saying with a loud voice, if any man or woman, any human being, Worship the beast or worship his image or receive its mark on his forehead or in its hand. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. But here, verse 12, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those that are not worshiping the beast or its image. Here are those that are not keep having uh, the mark on their foreheads or on their hands. Rather, they have the seal of the living God on their foreheads. The name of the Father written and edged by the Holy Ghost. The down payment of their salvation. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. And here are they that keep the faith of Jesus. And then I looked. And behold, up in the skies, a white cloud. And upon the cloud, one like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Now came another angel out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth and behold my brothers and sisters in five words, the five most solemnest words in all of Holy Scripture and the earth was reaped. Wow. What a message. What a time to be alive. That you and I can know this message. We can know how to fear God and give Him glory. We can learn how to worship Him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the fountains of water. On the day He's asked us to worship that points to Him as Creator. What an awesome time to be alive, to know about Babylon, this great city, and all the lasciviousness and fornication that comes out of her, not to drink of her cup of indignation. And we ought to know that we can study and learn the truths of the beast, the image of the beast, the mark of the beast, the name of the beast, the number of the beast, the whole last day monopoly, and how it is that we can escape that we can escape, that we can love the truth, sell it not, that we can hide the truth and be gifted with the Holy Ghost to T-rail our back and to not bend, bow, or budge in these last days because this is coming. The earth shall be reaped, but before the earth is reaped, there must come a rain. The greatest sign is the Holy Ghost coming upon the latter rain and empowering God's last day people to become a remnant. Enough with the follies of the world. 
Enough with tinkering around with sin. God wants us to keep the eye on the ball. You know, I took some young people to do some bowling the other night. And well, you, sometimes, you know, when you're bowling, uh, this, you know, you kind of miss and, and strikes and this and the other. And the, they saw me and I had a friend of mine. He saw me as I was bowling. It was just going on the, to the gutter. It was just going to the, to the right and just staying in the gutter. And, you know, the most embarrassing thing is you have to turn back and look at everyone, right? <laughs> That's kind of embarrassing. So he said, look, he says, Pastor, since it's going to the right, Take the ball and move to the right and your body automatically, because the line of sight, your body's going to contour a little bit and it's not going to go the gutter. That's the first point. Number two, don't aim at the pins. Aim at the little dots on the floor. And so what I did, he says, aim between number two and three and then give it all you got and don't lift your head. <laughs> so I, I went to the right, kind of felt a little weird, but yet the body actually did contour. And then I went back, I ran a little bit, and then I gave it all I had. I aimed at the dots on the bottom between dot number two and dot number three. Hit it strong and straight and don't look up. Just keep the eyes on the pin. And would you believe I looked up afterwards and I hit a strike. Strikes are good in bowling. Not good in baseball, but good in bowling. And would you believe that? I said, I can do this again. And I went to the right. I aimed down and I kept my head down and I just aimed at two and three and it hit a strike. And so it is also when we keep our eyes on what is coming, when we keep the eyes on the latter rain, on the preparation that is needed to bring the coming of Christ, the presentation of the three angels' messages, swelling up in the fourth angel latter rain capacity. If we do all we can individually in preparing ourselves, our families, our church, and aim at the two dots on the bottom, the latter rain will empower God's people. Jesus said it, and then the end shall come. This same Jesus will take us to heaven. May God bless you and the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching Advent On with Harold Zapata. We pray you've been inspired to grow in your personal daily walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd like to learn how to partner with us to take the whole truth into the whole world, stop by adventon.org or send your prayers and financial support today to Advent On Ministries, P.O. Box, 333, Loma Linda, California, 92354. Preparing the way, restoring the truth, and uplifting Jesus' life. This program was a presentation of Advent On Ministries, Loma Linda, California. Music